Good afternoon, citizens of Ascension Parish. Good afternoon, Council. Welcome to the Thursday, February 15th, 207 uh, Council meeting. Uh, tonight, uh, we have a, a, a Troop uh, 131 from Prairieville, uh, sponsored by Mr. Uh, Philip LeBlanc, uh, and also sponsored by the St. John's Catholic Church, who is here tonight to present the colors, and then we'll have an invocation. So at this time, I'll ask everybody to rise. We'll have the pledge first. that uh, Troop 131. At this time, I would uh, like to pause for a moment of silence uh, in memory of uh, Mr. Rhett Babin, uh, the nephew of our council, uh, Ricky Babin, uh, son of Byron and Julie Babin of uh, Dutchtown, uh, who was killed in an automobile accident uh, yesterday. Ms. Fontenot, would you leave us, please? Yes, I will. Father, as always, we do come and give you great thanks for this blessed parish that we have. Father, tonight we make decisions for this parish. We ask that you give us the wisdom and the courage to do the right thing. Father, as always, we pray for those that are in our armed forces that are across the way fighting for this country, that we might live in this country in freedom and in liberty and, and, and in peace and safety, Lord. And Father, we just thank you that the many people of this parish that are here tonight for whatever their, their cause is tonight, Father God, that they would go home satisfied that they have a council that is willing to work on their behalf. And as always, Father, we give you the thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Roll call, Ms. Suzanne. All are present except for, excuse me, all are present. Mr. Thompson is now arriving. Move on to chairs, additions. Mr. Oliver Joseph, you have an addition, chairs addition number two thirds. Would you, uh, presentation, he'd like to, uh, like to uh, have someone present. Um, Mr. Oliver? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, I'm for two thirds of the votes for, uh, for a uh, second life to uh, second, uh, second, second line to second life, and that's by uh, Mr. Mikio Strub to give a uh, presentation on that, and the max for two thirds votes on that. Motion over. Second. Motion by Mr. Lambert Dempsey, and second by Ms. Fontenot. We we'll allow Ms. Stroud to uh, make a presentation to the board. Um, any objections? No objections. We'll put that uh, along with five, number five, as presentation, since it's what it is and we'll take it up at that time. Mr. Lambert. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I do have another two-thirds. Uh, this was moved on at the drainage board meeting and accidentally didn't get put on the agenda. It's an intergovernmental agreement between the parish and the drainage board, so I'd like to get it on two-thirds. So moved, yeah. moved by <coughs> Councilman Barriga. Second. Second. Second by Ms. Fontenot. Any uh, object objection to that? No objection. We'll put that as 21A. 21A, Intergovernmental Agreement, Board of Commissioners of the Drainage Board. Okay. Any other emergency? Any other items? Okay. Well, yes, sir. Chairman, I just want to pass on that uh, item number 15. Item number 15. All right. We'll pass on item number 15. Okay. 
um, agenda item number four is public comment. Anyone that wishes to speak on any agenda item, please sign up with the secretary. We have sign up cards. Uh, and please put down uh, the agenda item you'd like to speak on. You'll have th three minutes to do that. Uh, so if you haven't done that yet, please do uh, sign it with the secretary. And six, the parish president's report. Parish president Ronnie Hughes. Parish president. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. You're right, Miss Tamiki. I'll put you ab above him. Miss Stroud, it's all yours. Good evening, council members and citizens of Ascension Parish. My name is Tamikio Stroud, and I'm here to invite you to attend a cancer awareness event, which is going to be held in Donaldsonville, um, Saturday, February 24th, from 12 to 4. And I have a flyer to pass out to the council members, if that's okay. <coughs> The event is entitled um, Second Line to a Second Life, and it's to increase cancer awareness and promote cancer screenings. It's a real, true, live New Orleans style second line that's going to occur down Railroad Avenue um, starting at 4 o'clock at Division Street and Railroad Avenue. Um, there's going to be a New Orleans brass band that's going to be there, um, ending at Crescent Park with a health fair. Um, and I'm inviting you guys to participate. Currently, we have sponsors, the city of Donisonville, um, GSA, um, Hollywood Casino, Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center, and a host of others. Um, one of the things we're asking anyone who decides to participate in the second line is to decorate an umbrella. I was supposed to bring my umbrella. That's why I went home and I forgot. Um, to increase awareness, you can decorate it and have something to do with cancer awareness, to celebrate the life of a survivor, maybe have a picture of a survivor on the umbrella or in memory of the loss of loved ones. Um, in particular, my umbrella is going to be dedicated to my mom who died of breast cancer and to my aunt who's a survivor of breast cancer. Um, I'm also looking, maybe seeking sponsorship. I need two portalettes. I don't know if the parish would be willing to uh, sponsor two portalettes, but I'm seeking that as well. But this is just um, to offer an invitation to each one of you um, to attend the event. And okay. if you decide to you know, sponsor the portalettes, let me know. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Stroud. Chair will recognize a resolution in favor of the uh, or in, so in motion. Motion by Adrian Thompson, uh, second by Mr. Lambert, Todd Lambert, um, for promoting uh, cancer awareness and the success of her uh, of the drive in Donaldsonville. We appreciate that. Any objection to that resolution? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Al. Appreciate your service to the community and, of course, your service on the council while you were here. This time we'll have the parish president's report. Parish president Thank you, Ronnie Mr. Hughes. Chairman. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'll give you three or four brief items, things that's happened just the last few days. As you know, last week I, I went to Washington uh, and spent a good bit of time with members of Congress, um, as well as an economic development trip with the St. Tammany Parish delegation of breakfast that was held on Friday morning of last week. And something you need to be aware of that's coming together is that the seven parish presidents in the uh, I-12, I-10 corridor is forming a group called the... Uh, Southeast Louisiana Parish Presidents Growth Management Association, I think. It's a long name. And the purpose of it is to try to really get the attention of the state and federal government on the growth that's occurred. We have about 700,000 people now in those seven parishes, of which were traditionally rural parishes. And the allocation of resources from both the state and federal level has not been uh, what it should be to maintain and improve state highways within those seven parishes. So our primary for us to begin with will be infrastructure. And we'll be meeting with legislators and the governor. We met with the congressional delegation last week. Five of the seven parish presidents were in Washington to meet with them to discuss this. They all think it's a good idea because of some strength in numbers. So that we, we represent about 14% of the state population now, what with historical rural areas. And you have a combination of three Republicans and four the Democratic Parish Presidents, so it's a nonpartisan group, very well received in Washington, very well received by, and we'll be meeting with our legislators soon. And we expect some success to come from that. We will also meet with Louisiana Recovery Authority, who has a significant amount of money designated for infrastructure, but 
Very little of that money is coming to the areas that have had the growth as a result of the storm. It's all going into the devastated areas, and obviously they need to receive a good bit of it. But what's happening in our parishes cannot be neglected, or we will be devastated as we move forward. And so the thrust of that is infrastructure, particularly highway systems now, as well as uh, economic development. And economic development is happening all around our areas. Um, there was only five parishes in the state. We just received the population numbers from Louisiana Tech. There was only five parishes in Louisiana since the 2000 census that grew a double-digit rate of, of growth. Our parish was 27.21%. Livingston was 25.23 or so. St. Tammany was in the 16th percentile. St. John the Baptist was in 13 to 14 percentile, and Tangeboro Hole, which has really started to grow since the storms, is 11 to 12 percentile now. And those are the only five parishes within the state that has grown at a double digit rate of growth since the 2000 census. And so the seven parishes that's joined together has all five of those parishes within that group. And we'll get you a copy of all the population numbers. The state has continued to lose population. 28 parishes had negative growth. 55 parishes grew at 5% or less, and we include those 28. Many of the ones who grew had less than 1% of growth. And so it's something that's uh, really important. The population shift that is occurring is significant, and we're trying to work to get our officials to understand their allocation of resources need to be adjusted as well. The other thing is that we've, we've interviewed four or five people. It's been a whirlwind since the first of the year for planning and development and public works. And we're fortunate in two or three people have recently moved from our par into our parish who have served in government in Texas and Arkansas and Missouri and other places that we're interviewing and meeting with who have expressed an interest to come to work in parish government. Uh, we hope to we're also interviewing people within the department now who are interested in moving up. So we hope to, by the first of the March, a little thereafter, to be able to name uh, people in both of those positions for the critical uh, to manage and work with the growth that's occurring. The other thing that occurred the other day, the day before I left for Washington, is that the region, uh, the potential of a flu pandemic or a medical emergency from the Homeland Security Front, either from a terrorism uh, induced event or from natural causes is something that the federal government and state government is very concerned about. And so there was an exercise held for a complete day last week where our new director of Homeland Security participated so that we can prepare ourselves for these type of pandemics. And that went very successful and our new director is really doing some good things in that, in that area. The last thing I'll just comment on, I'll invite you tomorrow night, there's a special supper where we'll feed again this year, the LSU Livestock Show at Lamar Dixon. Beginning at about 6 o'clock, the Jambalaya Festival Association, the Rotary Club, and the Knights of Columbus have joined together, as we did last year, to welcome the many participants of the LSU State Livestock Show to our parish. And tomorrow night, we will feed this group, preparing food for about 11 to 1,200 people. And you're invited to be there at 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Parish President. <clears throat> I'll add one thing to the OEP director, Mr. Richard Weber, our new o OEP director. He has invited all councilmen uh, and council ladies to uh, make sure that they could come by as soon as they could. To uh, He'd like to talk with you and just maybe you want to share your views of the OEP uh, uh, situation here in the parish. Uh, if you have any concerns or any praises to give him, uh, he'd, he'd like to hear from you. So he invites each one of you to make an appointment with him, please. Thank you very much. We'll move now to agenda item number seven, consent agenda to adopt the regular council so minutes move, Mr. Chairman. of January 18th. Moved by Mr. McConnell, Tillensbeck. Mr. Doug Tillensbeck, second by Mr. Lambert. Any discussion? So moved. Agenda item number eight, the Utilities Committee, Councilman no, Barrett. No report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. The um, agenda item number nine, Personnel Committee, Mr. Savoy. No report, Mr. Chairman. Agenda item number 10, Recreation, Mr. Chairman, uh, excuse me, Chairman Alva Joseph. Uh, Chairman Joseph, you'll wait one second. We do have one speaker that would like to speak on this agenda item, Ms. Catherine Goppel. Ms. Goppel, you have three months. Good evening. The council and school board have worked together and there is no longer a need for the school board to use the Ascension Civic Center for storage. A double wide trailer has been placed on the property for this purpose. But recent developments have, have provided an opportunity for a closer look at the facility and its use. A bit of history. 
1980, the Reynolds-Lambert Park was leased to the parish for 25 years. The parish initially used $220,000 appropriated from the legislature. The school board gave $250,000 and the town of Sorrento $19,900 to build the center. In 85, the Civic Center uh, Commission was created to uh, look over these five acres. It included the police jury, Gonzales, Donaldsonville, and Sorrento. In 92, the makeup of the commission was amended, and in 93, the three municipalities pulled out. In 95, a portion of this leased property was given back to the school board to build a maintenance building. And in February 06, <coughs> the commission was abolished by this council, and the parish council entered into a five-year lease beginning January 1. Here's a breakdown of receipted events in 06. The Civic Center was rented 29 times, bringing in $13,000. Total receipts for all rental property leased by the Recreation Department were $29,325 for 06. Thus, the Civic Center produced 44% of the revenues collected with 23% of total rentals, which were 129 for the year. This does not include unreceded events, including the Ascension uh, Parish government events and food for family giveaway, which happens at least once a month. Individuals use the facility 75 times, business 13, government 15, and other organizations 26. The Sorrento Fire Department Trail Ride Fundraiser held here provides about 40% of their budgeted revenue. I want that one. You can turn that off, Ozzy. <laughs> here, um, records show that the 20 year period from 85 to 04. Uh, the cost to operate the center was an average of only $2,745.89 every year. In 2002, when the Civic Center Fund was closed out, $61,000 was placed in the recreation fund. Air conditioning was added in 2003 for $92,000. The roof was repaired last year for $23,000 from the Rural Development Fund. And the parish spent $8,170 on gutters and downspouts. In conclusion, the facility has been well utilized, is affordable to the public, is the top revenue producer, and is operated at a cost of about 3000 a year. Quite a bargain. Good when you check. consider we lost almost $1 million last year on Lamar Dixon and the total budget for recreation parishwide is $1.2 million. The Civic Center provides services to the public and is not cost prohibitive. The Civic Center is a bargain and a blessing to the Ascension community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cobb. Chairman Joseph. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Recreation um, met, and we made a recommendation that the, uh, the committee keep the Sorrento Civic Center and request full council support. We also the committee request that the administration and council members in the school board meet to discuss the future of the Civic Center. So moved. Moved by, by Chair, uh, excuse me, moved by Councilman Sheck Snyder, second. second by Adrian Thompson. Any discussion on resolution? Okay. Okay, any, any opposition to the resolution? No opposition, opposition, pa I mean, the resolution passes. Yes, uh, Parish President, you want to make a comment on that? Yeah, just one thing, Mr. Thank you. To my knowledge, we still have not received any official notice from the <coughs> uh, and, and the contract that we signed last year requires 90 day notice by either party, either parish or school board, to get out of the lease. And so we've never received that notice. Mr. Chair, there, there, there were just a point of. of um, Clarification: There was uh, a meeting that was held on TV. There was some discussions about a BMX track and some skateboard track and some other things, and uh, the the this, and there was a paper. Uh, I think there was a newspaper article, and there was some confusion. And Mr. Price and and uh, uh, Mr. Sanji met with me, and and uh, we pretty well ironed out that situation. There's nothing that the council will do on that track of, of land, uh, certainly without uh, talking to the school board first, because it is 16 section land. Mr. Hillens back. Yeah, just one uh, point of. Uh, information uh, the building that was placed on the property uh, it, it was not a double wide trailer for storage it was in fact a modular building so yes sir. Want, just want to point that out okay all right Is that it mr. Joseph yes sir thank you very much sir uh, agenda item number 11 transportation committee Ms. Cheryl Fontenot road project update information thank you mr. Valentine we did have a meeting this past week but most of the items will be on the next council agenda uh, however under the road projects update I would just like to tell the public that it is good to see that the state has continued to move on on airline and we do have some smoother intersections this has been a point of contention for many who live in the area and I just wanted to, to uh, 
to let them know that their state is working mm -hmm. to co complete that. And as always, I invite everyone to either view us on Channel 21 or to come here personally at 6.30 or right after the <coughs> Utility Committee meeting on the second Tuesday of the month. Look forward to seeing you drive carefully. Thank you, Ms. Fino. Mr. Chairman, a question? Um, yes. Well, uh, since we're on uh, road project updates um, of the Transportation Committee, could we have an update, please, of the uh, 2005 road project uh, for Ascension Parish Roads, what's actually going on? And you know what I want, Lake Park Subdivision and B. Phillips Road and... And Betty uh, Street. What do you want? Betty Street. Throw Betty Street in Mr. there for Mr. Byrigger, please. Um, Thank you all on season. Uh, Mr. McConnell, we, we will have those updates, but they will be at the committee meetings. I, I'm not sure Mr. Rue is prepared to do that. He is. So uh, I understand, Mr. Okay. Chairman, I, and I appreciate that, but that's what it says on here, road project update. And, 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 and the, and the, the state is, we're not, I'm, you know, state yes. roads are not our bailiwick. And, and the reason is, if Ms. If Fontenot has, has an update, she can give it to you. Ms. Fontenot, do you have an update? Uh, I do not have an update, but Mr. Kent Israel is in the audience, and he usually brings the updates on the road projects, and he is here. If he has the information, he certainly may bring it forth. Okay, I, I'm, I'm going to allow Mr. Israel tonight, but I will remind this council that's what committee meetings are for, and that's what we'll do it. Mr. Israel, you can go ahead and do it tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Valentine. Yes. I have made a request of the uh, Transportation Secretary to email everyone the road project updates because Mr. Israel does bring them to the transportation meeting in written form. And so they will, okay. they will get that in the future to their email address. Thank you. Thank you. What I've passed out is a list and the status of the 2005 road program that is under construction now. The contractor is working on John Broussard Road and Caesar Road, Caesar Drive at this point in time, and we should be getting to the streets that you were in question hopefully in the next couple of weeks if the weather holds out. It's been just very nasty weather and has not been able to get a whole lot accomplished in the last couple of weeks. But you will be updated on a, on a monthly basis on the status and hopefully we'll make some progress. <coughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Councilman McCombs. Thank you, Mr. Israel. Is that it, Ms. Fontenot? That completes my report. <laughs> okay, we'll move now to agenda item number 12, strategic planning. Chairman Sheikh Snyder. No report. Thank you, Chairman Sheikh Snyder. Uh, we'll move now to 13, the Finance Committee, Chairman Barriga. Chairman Thank Barriga. you, Mr. Chairman. 2006 compiled audit questionnaire. We need a motion for that resolution. So moved. Moved Chairman. by Councilman Todd Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman Savoy. Discussion. This was discussed uh, at the at the finance meeting. Yes, sir. Green. It was a yes. unanimous recommendation yes. of finance. Any opposition? So moved. B. The resolution regions bank. Chairman. Next, we have. Uh, I believe it's on a yearly basis. We have to pick our financial institution that the parish uses. It was a recommendation to use Regions Bank. Moved by Chairman. Uh, excuse me. Moved by Councilman McConnell. Second by Councilman Fontenot. Any discussion? Any opposition? So moved. Number three, parish of a, uh, excuse me. Number three, contract renewals. I got three of them, Councilman Barron. Yes. Uh, number one, we have Jones Fusion Architecture Firm. I believe that's for uh, Fire District Number Three. They may so move, Mr. Chair. They need this for de uh, design a new fire station. Moved by Councilman Hillensbeck, second by Councilman Todd Lambert. Any discussion? Any opposition? So moved. Next, we have the Parish of Ascension, City of Gonzales, and Fire District One. This is a cooperative endeavor agreement between the agencies I move the uh, contract, for fire Mr. protection Chairman. from the City of second. Gonzales. Moved by Councilman McConnell, second by Councilman Shakespeare. Any discussion? Any opposition? Next. Motion carries. Next, we have a contract 
between the parish and Dr. Paul Aguilar. Motion. Second. Motion by Councilman Thompson. Second by Mr. Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Any discussion? Any opposition? So moved. And that completes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman Barrigan. We'll move now to the general business portion. Number 14, acceptance of bids. Ms. Jones Shivers, our senior buyer. We will deal with pump sand, asphalt, and coal mix. Ms. Shivers. Good evening. On February 6, 2007, the purchasing department received one bid for pump sand. B the bid was received from Nonstop Transportation Company. So moved. Second. Moved by Chair, Chair uh, excuse me, Councilman Barriger. Second by Councilman La Todd Lambert. On Any discussion? Any opposition? So moved. On February 6, 2007, the Purchasing Department received one bid for asphalt. The bid was received from R.J. Daigle and Son. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved by Councilman Todd Lambert. Second by Mr. Thompson. Councilman Thompson. Any discussion? Any opposition? So moved. On February 6, 2007, the Purchasing Department received one bid for coal mix. The bid was received from Material Resources. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Moved Second. by Councilman Barriga. Second by Councilman Savoy. Any discussion? Any opposition? So moved. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Shivers. <coughs> Agenda item number 15 is passed. Agenda item number 16, property and casualty insurance renewal. renewal. Mr. Harry Robert. Mr. Robert. <coughs> Thank you, Councilman, Council Lady. <clears throat> I guess before I start on the uh, property and casualty portion, I'd just like to mention a few words about the uh, hospitalization, the health insurance program that we initiated just at the beginning of the year. <clears throat> we had our first little uh, department head meeting this past week, and reception that uh, of the whole program seems like it's, it's real, real positive. You know, we have a few education problems that we're going to have throughout the year, but other than that, I think that probably things are going quite well. As far as the property and casualty <coughs> program, I think everybody's pretty well aware of the, the problems that we have in insuring property in, in our state and in our area. Uh, before you, you know, you see a comparison, and just for for historical purposes, and I gave you the figures that uh, that were involved with insurance for the previous five or six years. The column all the way to the left gives you the, the proposal that we received from Arthur Gallagher, who is the broker that insures the majority of all the public entities and municipalities, you know, in our state and the surrounding states. As you can see, if you just start off on item number one and go all the way down the line, the automobile insurance was reduced about 10 percent. You know, property really went up close to probably 80 or 90 percent. The general liability went down which is indicative of the risk management program and just the attention that y'all pay into whatever y'all do in the parish. So that was a, a welcome sight. The public officials' liability remained about the same, and the ball and machinery, which is indicative of property, also increased slightly. But that was just because of the values increase. The crime insurance remained the same, and the employee-related practices insurance, you know, went down, you know, considerably. So workman's compensation is going to go up uh, just a small amount, which is indicative of the increase in payroll. But the overall program, you know, represents about an 18 percent, including the property over the last year. The proposed coverage is with the same company that's been carrying it for the last six years, which is St. Paul's Travelers. It was St. Paul's two years before, but St. Paul and Travelers marriage was not St. Paul Travelers. So with your permission, I'd like to go ahead and uh, initiate the idea of, of renewing the contract with Arthur Gallagher and St. Paul Insurance Company. Is there any questions? I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions of Mr. Robert? No questions, Mr. Robert? You, you need us to give you the okay on right, Well, Chair, we'll recognize him. I so move, Mr. Chair. Moved by Mr. McConnell, second by Mr. Thompson. Any other discussion? Just have to take the pill, that's all. That's it. 
No discussion. Any opposition? So moved. Thank you. And just just a note, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mr. Robert has always been available to meet with any council member. This is a very complicated subject, and, and I always appreciate the candor that he gives us and the time that he uh, shares with us to, to talk about. So I encourage you, if you're at all confused about this, uh, that you meet with Mr. Robert at, at, uh, at a convenient time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Harry. Okay, we'll move now to agenda item number 17, planning and zoning recommendations. Mr. Lance Brock, Spanish Moss Development Conceptual Plan, Plan Unit Development PUD located north side of North Ro Robert Wilson Road, approximately 300 east of West Robert Wilson Road, and that is to accept our time. Mr. Lance Brock. Yeah, so the recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission was to accept the conceptual plan, uh, Plan Unit Development. Okay, we have several speakers on, on this agenda item, uh, and this it has been uh, naturally a con hotly contested item. What I plan to do is, since there has not been a uh, presentation to the council yet, uh, I have talked with Mr. Grzaffi, and Mr. Grzaffi uh, will have 15 minutes to present, uh, to give us a presentation on his, um, on his PUD. Uh, I will let him do that first. I will also give him some time at the end if he would like to rebut anything that is said during the meeting, uh, kind of similar to what they do at planning and zoning. I will afford you that, uh, that courtesy. Uh, after he has given the uh, presentation on the PUD, I will then let uh, the audience with uh, three minutes to speak, the ones that have signed up for that particular item. Good evening. Just identify yourself, please. Yes, Kathy Bro, um, project manager for Spanish Moss Development. Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, council member, council people, thanks for having us. Um, we have a short PowerPoint presentation. Thanks. First, it is about the Spanish Moss, a planned unit development. Thank you. This is the um, the first thing you have in your handout is going to be the site location, basically where the vicinity of the planned unit development is located. As it exists now, it is a 667 acre, basically pasture wooded piece of property. Um, it's currently zoned conservation. Yeah, the majority is not in a flood zone, and its surrounding proximity use is residential. <clears throat> the next thing you have is going to be basically the, the development summary. Um, we're looking at developing approximately 436 acres as residential. 57 is going to be professional service type um, facilities. Seven acres for retail, 133 acres of common space, which is basically your green space, lakes, parks, um, waterways, um, riding trails, equestrian fields, and that sort of thing. 25 acres is also being asked for for a Catholic high school in the area. Nine acres of assisted living facility. The, um, that's the conceptual plan, again, there. This is a rendering of what the quarters at Spanish Moss would look like. On the ground floor would be basic um, office professional and above townhouses. The pictures that you're going to see um, next were acquired at River Ranch in Lafayette Parish. It's basically the same concept as River Ranch. Um, this is going to kind of show you with your zero lot lines. Um, your 60 foot wide lots, your 100 foot wide lots, 80, and your acre lots. And that is um, a sample of your lakes, waterways, and uh, lakes and pathways. <coughs> An environmental study was performed by Sims Incorporated on the proposed site. This site is bounded north, south, east, and west by basic residential 
um, developments. The results of the analysis indicate that there is no apparent environmental conditions that exist that would adversely affect the site. The results also indicate that the proposed residential development of the property is consistent with the surrounding property usage. The subject property's location in relation to the Geismar area, industrial plants, should not present an adverse safety condition to the public and should not limit the use of the property to medium density. It's, there is existing me medium density now in the vicinity. The traffic concerns, we also did um, a study, a traffic study, to see what uh, impacts might be faced with, and a study was done by Krebs, LaSalle, and Lemieux, who gave, also submitted this to CSRS um, for review. This report details hundreds of thousands of dollars of improvements that the development um, is willing to take on. The next few slides will give you an idea of what that will entail. LA-30 at Ashland would consist of an eastbound through lane with single timing change. LA-30 at West Robert Wilson, a new traffic signal, northbound right turn overlap arrow and eastbound left turn. LA-30 and LA-73 with change signal timing. LA-73 at 429, two-way left turn, North Robert Wilson and at West Robert Wilson, construct a roundabout. Phase two improvements would consist of Louisiana Highway 30 and Louisiana Highway 73 right turn lanes, LA-30 westbound and LA-73 northbound. LA-73 at 429 westbound turn lane. Phase three improvements would consist of Louisiana Highway 30 at Ashland, with right turn lanes for northbound traffic. The phase four improvements would be LA-30 and Ashland widen LA-30 to four lanes with right and left turn lanes. LA-30 at West Robert Wilson widen LA-30 to four lanes with right and left turn lanes. Louisiana 30 at 73 widen 30 to four lanes with right and left turn lanes. LA-73 at Stevenson Road, widen LA-73 to three lanes. LA-73 at LA-429, signalized lane 73 with left and right turns. The um, parish planning and zoning um, asked us also, okay, the traffic highlights then is basically our project is less than 1.5 miles from LA-30 and Interstate I-10 interchange. Uh, there will be several major upgrades to existing roadways. These improvements will be constructed to the latest state and parish regulations. The developer has had preliminary discussions with LODT, um, DOTD at an exchange for interstate and corner view with an, on, um, an interstate on exchange there. The north entrance of Spanish Moss is only one quarter of a mile from this proposed interchange. An interchange at this section would be a significant benefit to existing traffic, Spanish Moss, and any future developments in that area. <coughs> the construction lane entrance was questioned and um, we have decided to put that at industrial plex so that it won't impact any of the residents who live there as we speak. The impacts to drainage. Um, a study was done by Alvin Fairburn and Associates, and there will be basically no impact to drainage. Um, we have enough on-site detention ponds, waterways, and stuff that most of it will be contained there. And the way the property is um, situated and it drains, it will basically impact nothing north or south of the development. And that's just uh, the lakes and waterways again. Impacts to sewer. The sewer will be taken care of by um, an on-site sewer treatment plant put up by the developer. There will be no impacts to the existing, faci any existing facilities. 
impacts to water. Um, Ascension Parish, Ascension Water Company has just water distribution mains adjacent to the site, and they are prepared to begin distribution um, as the de development is needed. Should there be a need, land will be made available for water wells or water towers, whatever might be necessary. What Spanish Moss will bring to this community? You're looking at townhomes, 284 garden homes, 60 foot lots, 307 in approximate, approximately 387 70 foot lots, 170 80 to 100 foot lots, and 59 estate or one acre lots. Um, the residential density that we have right now, it says it's 1.9 lots per acre. However, that will be affected, actually decreased, because we've talked to the school board and, and we've talked about some acreage being donated for a school and stuff, and that would probably take 100 lots. So it's even less the density that um, we had previous. The amenities, we're looking at scenic lakes and waterways, walking and riding trails, recreational parks and pavilions, athletic facilities, football fields, baseball fields, soccer fields, community centers, clubhouse, swimming pools, tennis court, equestrian center, Catholic high school, middle and or primary public schools, land available for fire department and public su uh, sheriff substation. Services and retail, health club, dry cleaners, community store, medical offices, professional offices, mixed retail, beauty salons, restaurants, coffee shop, bakery, pharmacy, banking, convenience store, post office, chapel, farmer's market, child care, adult care, assisted living. The developer is in correspondence with parties about um, medical facilities being built with potential training and technical teaching facilities along with the proposed doctor's offices and a possible uh, outpatient clinic. A Baton Rouge cardiologist has also expressed interest in locating um, within, the proposed within this proposed medical complex. A urologist from Covington has expressed an interest in locating an outpatient surgery center here. These plans are preliminary, however, and this is a good example of what possibilities could be seen within the Spanish Moss development. This will only be done with the involvement and support of our local doctors. Economic benefits, 800 new permanent jobs, 1,500 construction jobs, 2.3 million in annual tax revenue every, for every 10 million in construction activity at Spanish Moss. It will result, result in the following for Ascension Parish. 11.3 million in business transactions, 4 million in personal earnings, 167 new jobs. In conclusion, we're looking at taking a piece of property that's virtually vacant and um, converting it into a model of smart growth, self-sufficient development, choices for living, acreage lots, townhomes, office units, many services and, um, and amenities available, work, play, live without leaving, further reduced traffic impacts, a community to be proud of. When we did present this, to quickly just tell you, the um, parish planning and zoning did ask us to come up with a, a little bit more on the traffic impact. And what they asked us to do was basically widen the road from Highway 30 to the entrance of Spanish Moss, which was on the outside of Spanish Moss, but we've agreed to do that. Also on the north and in where um, it connects to New River Canal Road, we've been asked to improve that and cling to corner view. And that's already um, also been said we would do that. The connector street, the major thoroughfare thor street through this would connect 30 to corner view, something that has, I know, been long sought after. Um, the prevailing winds, we did the, they asked us to check on the prevailing winds and it looks like the winds would come out of the southeast to the north to the northwest which would flow directly south of Spanish Moss um, 
Uh, they also asked us about checking with the plants, checking with the OEP, <coughs> and for evacuation purpose and that sort of thing. In the case of a release or anything like that, we asked, and they, they told us that they do not recommend evacuation. They ask that you shelter in place, close all windows, doors, heating and air conditioning off, and just stay there for the all clear uh, sign. There is a 600 foot buffer that was established for the chemical plants, and we are far beyond the 600 foot. We're actually, our nearest um, residential area to any facility structure is 3,400 feet. Um, we're actually 2.5 miles from the chemical plant properties. Economic benefits. We asked um, Dr. Richardson to, with LSU, to do the, the study on economic development Spanish Moss will provide permanent and economic tax base to Ascension Parish. New homes will be added to property tax base. New families will add consumption to the base. New office buildings will add to overall economy. Jobs rising from 350 in 2007 to near 800 in 2016. Local tax collections should rise from 1.9 in 2007, 2007 to over 3. million in 2016. The development of commercial property will lead to just over 70 jobs per 10 million of spending by commercial units. You have one minute, Ms. Brown. I'm sorry. You have one minute. Oh, okay. Um, the, there will be a demand for educational services. But we have, again, new families will require public public education. New community creates permanent and recurring tax base, incremental education. If you look at the slide that was prepared here, you'll see that in the first three to four or five years, the income far outweighs the expenses. It's only until about five years down the road that the expenses start to catch up with the um, income somewhat. Those adjustments just will be made along the way. Um, we were asked to, there's a grave site. It will be taken care of. We've located it on the site and it will be preserved. Uh, we've also put in there the densities, uh, but the percentages of what's going to be up at with the different phases. And the fire and police state substations, we've also contacted the fire department and the sheriff's office and let them know that that would be made available to them. Thank you. Thank you. First up, we'll have uh, speaker, Mr. James Ryan. Mr. Ryan. Good evening. My name is James Ryan, and I live on New River Canal. All of this looked good, but this watching programs, watching y'all, we can't get the state to do what they pledge to do on highways now. This is not going to happen, <clears throat> in my opinion. Also, they're talking about New River Canal widening it. What they're talking is about not even a fourth of it. When it backs up at corner view, the traffic's going to go the other way down New River Canal, and it's a substandard road. We want to keep our community conservation. Now, you saw fit to zone it conservation. We would like to keep it conservation. The water, they say they're going to take care of it. It's not going to happen. I've seen too many developments where the water does, it impacts. They say it's not going to, it drains, it does drain now. But when you start putting all the concrete and everything else on it, yeah, it's going to drain, it's going to flow quick. Uh, I don't know where this corridor they're talking about coming from 30 to uh, corner view is going to go across that, unless it's going to tie back into New River Canal and then go that way through Kling Road. <clears throat> but uh, I'm not going to repeat a lot of stuff. It's just that. We do not think it's fit for the community, and we would like to see y'all refuse it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Mr. Johnny Cagnolotti. Mr. Cagnolotti. Remind all the speakers you have three minutes. I'm going to be uh, very brief, Mr. Chairman and uh, council members. I'm a lifelong resident of Ascension Parish. Uh, 
lived here and worked in the parish for quite a few years, but uh, I'm not against growth in the parish. I think that we're going to grow. We have to accept it. We're just we're becoming a, a popular place to live and work. Um, but I just don't think this is smart growth. I think we need to, to locate residential development much farther away from the industrial complex, and there's other areas that this can be done. Um, I serve the <coughs> mayor as his uh, chairman for the Civil Service Board, and I'm also a member of the uh, Ascension Chamber Board of Directors, but I'm not here in the capacity to represent them. I'm representing me as a citizen. I just ask you to uh, deny. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cagliotti. Mr. El excuse me, Miss Elizabeth Hughes to pass. Good evening. My name is Elizabeth Hughes to pass. I'm the trustee for the Herbert D. Hughes Estate Trust, the owner of the property under consideration this evening for the Spanish Moss development. Buzzer's Roost, or the Double H Ranch, or as I call it, the ranch, has been in my family since the early 1950s. We've had wonderful times there, and it matters to me what happens on that property. I believe that the Spanish Moss development proposed by Mr. Grizzoffi provides an attractive addition to the parish, and I would be pleased to see it on my family's property. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Um, Alan Bailey, is it? Mr. Bailey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Alan Bailey. I'm the Employee Relations Manager at BSF Corporation and a resident of Ascension Parish. Uh, I'm here this evening representing the management team of BSF Corporation. I've been asked to make a statement uh, regarding our strong opposition to the proposed Spanish Moss development plan on their behalf. BSF Corporation owns and operates on 2,300 acres located approximately two miles to the southwest of the proposed Spanish Moss development. I know each of you uh, are well aware of BSF and the chemical industry's continued support and contribution to Ascension Parish's economic prosperity and growth over the past 50 years. It is our position that the location of this specific development does not appropriately balance nor protect the interests of both present and future neighbors and the general public as outlined in Section 17-106 of the Ascension Parish Development Code. We believe that the current proposed location presents several negative impacts to the immediately surrounding community and infrastructure. This proposed development would significantly increase traffic flow and congestion along both LA-73 and LA-30. Accordingly, this becomes a public <coughs> safety issue and concern. In addition, as you're aware, Highway 73 and 30 are state-maintained roads. Any future upgrades or improvements to address the increased traffic flow would be subject to a lengthy state evaluation and implementation process. The establishment of the proposed Spanish Moss development at its current location will also have a significant negative impact on our parish educational system. The proposed development location is situated in the Dutchtown School Districts, and even with Superintendent Sanji's recently stated plan to redistribute Dutchtown area students, our current and future public education infrastructure cannot accommodate the additional student base that would accompany this development. In addition, it is our position that the location of the proposed Spanish Moss development would have a potential negative economic impact to our ongoing operations and our opportunity for future investment and growth. Currently, the land proposed for the development is zoned as conservation and provides a buffer to the industrially zoned activities of the chemical facilities. BSF Corporation is satisfied with the present zoning structure and strongly opposes any changes to its current conservation designation. BSF Corporation has invested over $1 billion at the Geismar site in the past five years. Any deterioration of this conservation zone buffer may have a negative future economic impact to our facility. In today's global business environment, the BSF Geismar site competes with potential locations across the world to earn the right to expand and build new facilities. It is BSF's position that maintaining the current zoning structure and gaining the reassurance that future changes will not be contemplated is critical to ensuring the continuance of our existing operations and securing future investments. We believe that supporting and maintaining the existing zoning structure is consistent with Section 17-107D of the Ascension Parish Development Code to, and I quote, balance residential, commercial, and industrial growth in order to protect the long-term tax base of the parish. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The management team of BSF Corporation respectfully requests that you deny the Spanish Moss conceptual plan at its current proposed location. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Ms. Linda Sole. Ms. Sole is also will speak uh, with, uh, excuse me, speaking on behalf of Kane and Angela Babin, uh, Lisa Elkins, uh, Erica Babin, and is that Ronald Latour? Okay. Um, I'm here on behalf of the parents from um, an organization that we have formed, uh, SOX, which is Save Our Community Schools. Pull the, pull the mic down just a little bit there. Thank you, Ms. Sole. Um, we would like to ask that you deny this development uh, due to the <coughs> overcrowding issues that are going on. Those of us that live <coughs> the closest to the schools are being shoved out by the growth that's on the outer areas that are coming in. Um, our children deserve to attend the schools that are in our neighborhoods and any further growth will push those of us that live the closest out. Possibly at a different time this development would be a great asset to our community, but until our school system can catch up with the uh, growth and handle the students that are currently living here, we would ask that you vote no Many of us have lived here and paid taxes in this parish for many years and deserve for our children to stay within their neighborhood schools. <laughs> um, I understand that they have offered uh, land to build a school, but that will take years. And currently the proposal will happen in the fall to move those of us that live close <coughs> out. And um, I don't even know as a parent if I would want a school built there on property that's that close. and coming from opposition from the plans. I don't think I would want my child attending a school there. So we ask that y'all consider the um, parents and students of this parish to vote no at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sully. We'll have uh, Lily Murphy. Uh, she will be addressing the council on behalf of the Ascension Chamber of Commerce. Ms. Murphy. Thank you. Um, there was a detailed planning process undertaken by the citizens of Ascension Parish, and that commission was diligent in their desire to minimize the impact of petrochemical operations through careful planning and managing residential density and commercial development close to industrial sites. The petrochemical industry in Ascension Parish is essential to our current and future economy since they supply the majority of our tax revenues, employ many of our local residents, and their operations provide a tremendous multiplier effect on our economy. While the Chamber supports the growth of all aspects and all sectors of our economy, including construction, residential development, and retail, we strongly encourage the Ascension Parish Council to be vigilant in supporting our local petrochemical industry by keeping the buffers in place and controlling residential density near these sites through current zoning. These actions strengthen our commitment to support the petrochemical industry and provides their key management officials confidence in retaining operations, planning future expansions, and demonstrates that Ascension Parish can compete in the global marketplace. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Mike Cohen. Good evening. Cohen. Thank you. Uh, I'll be very brief. Uh, my name is Mike Cohen. I'm the general manager at BASF. Uh, I'd just like uh, to add a uh, you know, perspective that's been emphasized today, and that is a question of trust and commitments. We were given a zoning. We accepted, we voted for it, we thought it was a good idea. And on that basis, we communicated that message to our management. Our management expects that when we set criteria, we follow them. And what we are asking is please keep it the way it is because we are looking into future. We have already uh, scheduled meetings with uh, uh, Secretary Olivier uh, next, uh, early next month. We're trying to see the governor. We are trying to implement a strategy whereby we would be moving as many of our manufacturing facility to the Geisman site. This kind of talk of we're gonna change something this week, we're gonna change it again next week is not something we can bring to a corporate office who, as we all know, are not 
don't know what's going on in Louisiana, but I have a very bad impression of what's going on because of previous history. They don't know the honorable people that are sitting here. They don't know the commitments. All they know is what they read in the papers, and unfortunately, we have some bad history. So please deny that request. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Ms. Catherine Goppel. The first PUD, Orange Grove, tripled the density. This second PUD, comprised of 667 acres, is zone conservation. And Mr. Grizzafi can build 667 homes right now without the council's approval. He is asking the council for a zoning change tonight that will double the density. Uh, 1,291 homes are projected to be built out in 13 years, 130 families, and 116 students added yearly. Development is driving the education crisis in our parish. Oops. This chart from the developer shows revenues generated from the proposed development in green and expenditures for education in purple. It is powerful. Note after the seventh year, new revenue will not be enough to match educational costs. This chart is a reality check. Growth will not pay for itself with but will bankrupt us and our children. More growth brings more revenue, more demand for public facilities, and more quality of life issues. These charts are updated and represent only subdivision development. I gave some of these to you in December. Private lots, family partitions, or development less than eight lots are not included. So really the growth is much more than this chart sh shows. This is just for subdivision development. Between 94 and 06, 12,808 lots were permitted. 1,706 in 2006. The breakdown of council districts for lots approved in 06 is seen here. As of December 06, we have a total of 2,118 subdivision lots approved but not permitted. Listen carefully. This is adequate to continue development of subdivision lots while a time out on only residential subdivision growth is put in place. All of the development can continue. Present population is around 94,000. Think about this. When we reach 100,000, the parish will be under a federal mandate to provide sewer, not roads. We need more money to build a jail and fire stations. Last year, revenues through September were $4.5 million over projections. Why not set aside matching funds to address infrastructure needs? The decision is yours, but the responsibility to fix the mess we're in due to growth is yours as well. This problem is not going away. It's been getting worse for years. Why? Because there's no plan. Smart growth doesn't just happen. It's planned. Hire a planner. Take time out from only subdivision development. Come up with a detailed plan to manage growth and then follow it. Do not approve this conceptual design or change the density. It's time to stop the madness. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gobb. Mr. Bob Morgan. Mr. Morgan. <coughs> Good evening. I'm uh, uh, Bob Morgan. I'm a lawyer from Baton Rouge. I've assisted Mr. Uh, Grisafi in, uh, in this project. I just want to uh, address a, a couple of things real quickly. I think uh, BSF and, and its allies have made a, a, a compelling argument, but uh, these things are all addressed in the, uh, in the study, in the impact studies, the traffic, uh, the, uh, the concerns about the odors and that sort of thing. Of course, EPA is, uh, is addressing those now, and, and I'm sure that BSF will agree that uh, uh, the, the scrubbers and the various things that have to be done in the next few years will eliminate some of the things that they've talked about in their letters. The prevailing winds make it very uh, unlikely uh, that there will be any sort of release. The plants have been operated um, very safely for many years uh, with no, uh, no incidents, uh, no um, releases outside the plant sites. Now, um, I want to, uh, I spoke to uh, 
the assessor from Lafayette Parish the other day, but we've been heard some talk about River Ranch. River Ranch is an exemplary model PUD in Lafayette Parish. I know you've all heard of it. It's also in the city of Lafayette. And uh, I asked him to uh, send me some statistics, and here, here's some of the things that he told me. In 1997, and I have an email from him that I'd like to uh, put in the record. Uh, I didn't have an opportunity to or, or time to uh, make copies of it. 1997, the, the property that River Ranch is on uh, was classified as agricultural, had an assessed value of $8,770, generated $737.73 in parish property taxes. 2006, same property, now with the development partially in place, uh, valued at $23,313,430 and generated uh, almost $1.8 million in parish property tax and 414000 in city taxes. In addition, the movable property in River Ranch produced an assessed value of, of $1,529,000 $200 and uh, generated uh, about $130,000 in parish taxes, parish and city taxes, and $27,000 in city property taxes. Um, <clears throat> the total 2006 property taxes, parish and city, generated by River Ranch Development was uh, $2,364,580. Um, and also, they're, they're, it's not all the way developed yet. Um, 15 seconds, Mr. Long. In any event, uh, this is a, uh, as, as Ms. Goppel pointed out, Mr. Krasathy uh, already has the right uh, to build a permissible residential area here. Time, sir. Thank you. This is just going to be a first class development for Thank Ascension you. Parish. Mr. Doctor, uh, excuse me, Dr. Jim Richardson. Rich. Thank you. I'm here speaking. I, I was asked to do an economic impact study for Spanish Moss development and also to look at the school in particular because obviously that's an important issue right now as indicated by various speakers tonight. And I think there, some of it comes from the fact that in the last several years there have been over 1,500 new students into the Ascension Parish school system and that is a very large load for any school system to, to accept at one time. Keep in mind, we're talking about a development over 13 years, a development adding in the neighborhood of 90 to 110 students per year, which is a very different situation. And as we do that, we bring with that school system, they bring taxes to the school system as well as to other public agencies in town. We find that I did the chart. I did it very conservatively as we estimated re revenues that might be forthcoming. We took into account no changes in the values of the homes over time, which certainly will happen. So in that situation, we, we are very conservative in making our numbers. We also note that for school expenditures, for schooling, you pick up a per dollars from the state for each student. Right now, Ascension Paris gets about $4,100 for each student in its school system. It puts up about $3,200 for that child. This development, in terms of the property tax base, the sales taxes that will be generated, and other revenues will certainly add to that or make up that, that $3,800 as of right now. And it's our projection, as we made it out over time, to be very cautious in forecasting the revenues in terms of local revenues, because obviously, as you look out over 10 years, your crystal ball becomes less and less certain. But we, the, 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 the uh, system as it fixed, fits together, if indeed the element is that any development, the school system cannot accept any development, you really change the whole name of Ascension Parish since over the last 20 years this has been one of the growth engines as Mr. Hughes pointed out <laughs> in his opening uh, uh, comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rich. <laughs> Mr. C.J. Kling. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people made a lot of good points about what's going on with this development. And some of the points, you know, they talk about schools. 
when Mr. Gazafi tried to do this the first time, the Ascension Parish School Board told him they would not build a school there. So therefore, he went to the Catholic school. And the Catholic, I don't know if y'all got y'all letters today, they said they won't build a school there either because if the parish school wouldn't be put there, they wouldn't build one because of the evacuation rights and all of that. So, I mean, if that one amenity is not given, what other ones that he promised will not be given? You know, they, they talk about the, the they're going to pay for the schools, but like the lady said, you know, we're being bused right now from the area we live in to another area. And it's just it's just not going to work. Uh, I agree with a lot of people that say that this is a good development, but it's not the right place to put it. You know, they compare it to River Ranch. River Ranch is in the middle of what they said, farmland, not next to the plants. And... Uh, like I said, BASF, to get another project, they're going to go by the density of the houses in the area to get future projects. And if you think BASF will not get them, there's two facilities shut down because they were too close to large densities. Now, if they're trying to get more to help the parish grow, which over the years we know the plants have supported our growth, why right now will we hurt those, that growth and hurt those plants that helped us all these years? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crane. Last speaker is Mr. L.J. Grzaffi. Mr. Grzaffi. Thank you very much. I sure appreciate y'all giving us this time and opportunity to talk. Hello to all you gentlemen and, and uh, Ms. Fontenot. I'm just going to uh, try to respond the best I can to a lot of negative uh, from the plants is where most of our problems are coming from and most of the, uh, the things that I'm going to address tonight. I'm just going to read from uh, a response, and you gentlemen have it on your, on your uh, you can follow along. It's, it's uh, along with the handout that we made. Um, and this is to the Ascension Council and Parish President Ronnie Hughes. Throughout this uh, plan unit <coughs> development of, uh, approval request, I'm, I've been over backwards to try to get along uh, and, and to not do or say anything negative about the chemical industry. But in light of the letter dated January 2nd, 2007, uh, from BASF Chemical Company, that was emailed to Parish President Ronnie Hughes. I feel, I feel like I must make a response to this letter and this misstatement. Uh, that letter was read here tonight. First of all, BASF is approximately two and a half miles to the southwest, not two miles, uh, uh, less than two miles as they stated. BASF does not employ 1,000 employees. That, uh, they employ directly 500 or less. You right remember uh, a recent layoff of 500 employees by BASF at one time. They are only concerned about their bottom line. Uh, they are a German comp company and the money they make leaves the state and does not turn over in the local community as small businesses do. The wages they claim they pay are questionable the amount they spend in parish, uh, in the parish annually, is questionable. I would ask for proof of that. The the other employ employees claimed by BASF that they say work for them actually are contract workers working for IMTT, uh, building tanks for IMTT tank farm, and uh, and land lease from BASF to IMTT. BASF is using scare tactics on their employees by saying that the approval of this Spanish Moss plan, uh, Spanish Moss plan unit development will have a neg negative impact on their jobs. This is not the way to treat good, hard, honest working employees. BASF does not mention my plans uh, addressed by my traffic impact study requiring an expenditure of $7 million in road improvements that I will do. That's off-site. How much has BASF and the other plants spent on road improvements? Uh, they talk about what they pay out in wages and how important their jobs are to the local economy. 
which I agree these jobs are important, but the truth of the matter is that approximately 70% of all employees live outside of Ascension Parish. BASF mentioned Spanish Moss impact on education. For the first seven years, taxes on construction will pay in more taxes to the school board than the school board will spend on educating children for the subdivision. I'll give you one more minute, Mr. L.J. For example, in one year, the projected taxes paid in will be $900,000 with no children even in school. This is because it will take one year to build infrastructure with no children in school, and the next year, home building will begin. Then after the seventh year, increment tax receipts will be addition because of increased property value. The information comes from the economic development study done by Dr. Jim Richardson. Another misconception by BASF is that this property is in the Dutchtown School District. The truth of the matter is approximately one half of this property is in East Ascension School District. This is just an well, another one of the mistakes that they made in coming after me as hard as they have. Plus evidence by a letter emailed to you from me, from Dr. S uh, Donald Sanji, saying plainly the Ascension Parish School Board is not against the Spanish Moss Plan Unit Development, and they intend to move forward with building a school on the property. Mr. LJ, Mr. LJ sir. that's time. I, I, I gave you time to rebut people here that were here tonight. I, I didn't want you to rebut a letter that we all have, so I'll have to call time on you, sir. Okay. Well, thank Mr. you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. LJ. Mr. Brock, you step back to the mic, please. <clears throat> okay, the agenda item is number 17, and we are to accept the NI uh, planning and zoning recommendation and planning room and, and zoning recommendation was to accept. Accept. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, I'll make a motion that we design, uh, deny planning and zoning recommendation. Mr. Thompson makes I, motion to I deny. Second. second by Mr. Todd Lambert. Discussion? Yes. Ms. Fondo. Uh, I do have some comments that I'd like to make to this board. Uh, Ozzy or Trent? Zoning. Unlike site plans, unlike subdivision plans, which typically go and stay at the planning commission level, a PUD is a more significant process, and it, it is zoning that has to be approved by the council. And um, in earlier meetings, there were some people saying, Charles, all, the, all that's going to happen is you're going to increase density. No, no, no. You're, you're going to have the same density. You could, you could if you elect to increase the density, you could do it. But typically, that's not what happens. You just move it around on the property to maintain the same number of lots, just better defined. The previous clip shows that PUDs are not created to allow higher density. This is our, de this right here is our development code. It was done in 1998, and it was revised in 2003. On page two of this book, the legislative intent, section 17-1025D states, this ordinance reflects the experience that the, par that the parish has had in implementing land use regulations since the passage of the initial development ordinance in 1998. Page two, jurisdiction, section 17-104, section D, Page 3 states, this ordinance implements the Ascension Parish Master Plan and the Ascension Land Use Plan adopted by the Parish Council. Page 4, Findings of Fact, Section 17-107 states, the Ascension Parish Council finds that A. Industrial operations in the parish involve the manufacture and transportation of chemicals. These operations pose a risk to public health and safety and should be adequately separ separated from high density residential development. Page four, guiding principles and policies, section 17-108 states. On the commentary, page 5C, principle, C, pr principle three, preserve the rural character of the parish. Preserve rural 
conservation and recreation areas from high dens intensity residential and commercial development. Page seven from top, section C, low density, low intensity districts are described as number one rule and number two conservation. The Spanish Moss property is zoned conservation and that was its intended person purpose as designated by the adopted zoning map. It was intended to keep high density away from industry. It was also intended to keep some of our parish rural and less populated. It was planned with purpose. This property can under our zoning have one house per acre and the developer can do so at this time. For all intent and purpose, both from, our, from the perspective of our industry and from the overcrowding school, school system, it needs to remain conservation. We need to follow the intent of the legislative decision with all future PUDs. PUDs need to be held to the current zoning standard with rare exceptions. PUDs can be a great tool for the parish and, devel and developers to work together so that the developer gets his maximum use allowed under the zoning code while still benefiting the public and the parish. Page 10, Statement of Purpose Intent, Conservation District 17-122 states, this area is designated to conserve the major environmental assets of the parish the district is intended for single family residential development and limited commercial development. This ordinance gives us the intended plan set forth by the council in 1998 and amended in 2003. It is imperative that this in administration hire a planner. Administration has not replaced the director that was left over, that has left over a year ago. Administration has hired a team of experts to update our codes. In the past three years, very little has been done. We do now, however, have PUDs, and they should follow our intent. It is time to review the code again. A planner working closely with the Planning and Zoning Commission as well as the school board members and other entities should, should keep us focused and bring and bring forth necessary changes. Our planner should be given the task to address growth and the current needs. We all need each other. Everyone is valuable at the table. Our developers, our builders, our school board, our firemen, our chamber of commerce, our tourism board, etc. Our children's and grandchildren's future should be our first consideration. Our schools cannot keep up with this current growth. Our local citizens are being asked to leave their neighborhood schools to allow new developments to have a seat in the school system they paid for with their taxes. This past week I've had many emails, many, four to many from industry and many from were from concerned citizens. One such individual said four times in his email, when is enough enough? Gentlemen, enough is enough. It is time to take the responsibility. We must follow the current code, take time out, hire a planner. It is the right thing. Citizens expect and deserve nothing less. It is our job and our responsibility to solve these problems. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Fonda. Let, let me uh, just suggest to council members that we stick to the agenda item at hand and let's stick to it um, as carefully as we can. Any other discussion? One comment, Mr. Chairman, yes. I'll try to do this briefly. Just so we, we all know, we do have a planner that's been here for a number of years. Uh, and he works with developers and developments. And we're in the process of trying to find another. And if you want to pay uh, a good bit of money, we can probably find a good urban planner. But you're going to have to really increase the salaries that we're going to be paying in this regard, especially in the light of the demand in this area now. So I need to hear from all of you individually and not in the public meeting on what you're willing to pay in that regard. So as we, and we have been talking with the American Planner Association, we need to know up front what this governing thought is willing to do. Thank you very much, okay. Mr. Chair. All right, any other discussion?
Just a couple points. Yes, sir. Uh, Councilman Berger. Thank you. Uh, just to remind the, the council and the administration, two or three years ago, uh, we uh, we came up with this wonderful plan. We looked at River Ranch and and had some thoughts, and and we went out and and tried to solicit a couple of developers to give us a few puds. And I remember Mr. Grizzafi being one of them. This council and also administration asked Mr. Grizzafi to give us a pud. He spent a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of effort to give us a very nice pud. And uh, we, we talk about industry. Uh, this project is two and a half miles to the closest process unit. How far is far enough? Is it 10 miles? Is it five miles? In our, in our code and ordinances, it says it's 600 feet. It's a buffer. That's my only comments. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Barry. Any other comments? Yes. Councilman Shakespeare. Yes. Um, a couple things. And again, as, as we're going, this is a very complex issue right here because uh, this is where we weigh uh, the better good of the people. Uh, there's not one person up here that is not uh, concerned about uh, maintaining the plants and their infrastructure and being able to have them continue and uh, we want to welcome uh, them as we continue uh, in this parish. We also are weighing the concerns of the local citizens that are around this area <clears throat> and what happens with growth as we go. And we're well aware of what happens in the school system. I've been myself employed by the school system. Uh, However, I do disagree with a couple of people when they said we should just leave things as they are. Because what we're doing is we're not, and, and, and then turn around and offer and say we need to plan. And if we leave things as they are, we're not planning. We're allowing 667 acres of prime land in Ascension Parish to be developed without a plan. Think about it. Without any plan, no roads, no sewer, no infrastructure, no schools, and we talked about problems here tonight created by new development. School problems, infrastructure problems, road problems, and if you think about what areas in Galvez and areas in Dustown looked like 13 years ago, which is the build out point of this uh, time of this development. It was all rural areas. And they didn't have anything. We didn't put any PUDs in place. We didn't plan for 13 years from then. And we got a bunch of small developments, one road in, one road out, no schools, no roads improvements, no, uh, no comprehensive sewer improvements and things of that sort in the parish and the rest of the parish has to pay and we can't afford it. So with the ideas of weighing the plant's interests, the local people's interests, and in my opinion the worst thing we can do is not present a plan, is to allow things to continue as they are. That would be bad for the plants, that would be bad for local people, and be bad for the parish. Uh, I'm not sure what the density should be in this area. Uh, right now, I think Mr. Gazafi is it's, it's common knowledge that he can uh, build, if he has this property or uh, who, whomever, can build 667 units. If he does not, or any developer, does not come forward and in an organized manner develop this property, and do all the road improvements. In a PUD, you're required by law. He cannot continue from one phase to another without doing the improvements. That's parish law, if we would pass an ordinance. So we would get a planned development. We will not get a planned development if we keep things as they are. I would imagine any developer will sell off portions and we will be getting 20 acres here with one road in, one road out, 
We were getting 50 acres here, one road in, one road out. And in 13 years from now, that 667 acres are going to present all of the congestion, all of the infrastructure problems, all of the sewer and water problems that we have right now in Dutchtown, Galvez, and the rest of the part of the, pro of the parish. That is my concern. And I think that's a responsibility that we have to look 13 years down the road and offer the people a plan, a true plan. Now, the way I see it, industry is satisfied with current conservation zoning because it allows one unit per acre, as it is 667 units. And let's be straight about it. It's because of liability. If they have a problem, that's 667 people that in that area, local area, that they have to be responsible for and deal with. And we are, that's a business decision, that's, that's a fact, that's a reality. And we have to be conscious of that. Uh, I don't want to, I would not want to come here and put them in a bind from that standpoint. Uh, so I think that it's pretty obvious there's going to be a, a pretty good split on this issue that is not going to be uh, satisfactory to any one group or the other. Therefore, I would like to offer a substitute motion to limit the amount of uh, residential development in the area to about, you know, and if somebody should come up with a different amount, I would say about 700, which puts you basically one house per acre. And allow Mr. Grazafi so that he can build the infrastructure with the uh, roads, the school, or whatever else that needs to be done to make this a planned community to allow him an increase in the business part, which is serving right now as a buffer. The business part, and if uh, Isaac, can you put the the map up there that we had discussed? with the zoning. This is the area right now and, and uh, I, I can't point to it. Right there is, uh, is the area to be developed and that's Highway 30 is right above the red. The red area is industrial zone. Right between the red area and what you see as Highway 30 is a transition area which is considered to be the buffer zone for industry. Above that, above Highway 30, and you can't see the color very well, is the light green area. That's called Business Park. Within Business Park, that's industries that are put there or companies that are put there to relate to business. And you see uh, a lot of people call it industrial parks. And you see that type of businesses there and they work in conjunction with the uh, industry. Uh, that is not, they do not allow residences in Business Park. So effectively, you have a very large area of buffer between the plants and also within the red area, there's a very large area of buffer within there to the plant areas. And my compromise to this is to extend, you cannot expect the developer to come in and build all the infrastructure if they cannot put something there that they can get enough money to, to earn that. And so you have to give something. And if we do not want to give density, which apparently everybody has conceded, then we, I, w I would think that we would move the line for the business part to an area further away from Highway 30 to allow Mr. Grazafi to develop some business park property within his area. And he can possibly make some money there. Uh, you would not increase the density. Uh, things could be worked out. They can take it back. This is a PUD, and the definition of a PUD is something that's worked out between all, pa all parties involved. And once it's worked out, it becomes law. And uh, I would like to see this uh, delayed until 
uh, next meeting where they can go back and come back with a plan that would change that and allow them to keep the density as it is and still allow him to make enough off his development to put the infrastructure. And I think that's something that can be worked out. Um, oh, Mr. Parrington, yes. before I uh, accept a uh, substitute motion, I think Mr. Sheikh Snyder would have the right to make a substitute motion to put off, but I don't think he has a right to dictate how many developments they can be in there in the motion. I think he has a right to make a motion to defer it to to attempt to amend the plan. Correct, to amend the plan. Okay. And if he wants that to, intent. and if okay. part of his motion is to limit the the ultimate, is to limit it, the amount it can of, be a suggestion. of residential, I think that could be a part of the okay. motion. Okay, a substitute motion by Mr. Sheikh Snyder to defer to the next meeting. Uh, uh, enabled to limiting the uh, housing in the, in the Spanish Moss Pod. Second by Councilman Barriga. Uh, discussion on substitute motion, Mr. Savoy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can appreciate what Mr. Shakespeare is trying to do and we're trying to do here. Uh, it, it is a very hot item, very important one too, very important. Uh, let's remember, and Lance help me out and make sure I don't get out of line here, but this is to accept or deny the Planning Commission's recommendation for the conceptual plan. Okay, if we were to accept the Planning Commission's recommendation, then Mr. Krasafi has to come back to this council. That's when we will iron out the details. If we can't iron out the details per um, density, that's when you work out the details and density. If you can't work out the details, and, and, and get a consensus from the majority of the council, then it's dead. Or some other amenities that we might want or need or see the need for. Is that correct? Underneath the uh, plan unit development, underneath the uh, conceptual plan, it says after receiving the recommendation from the commission, the, planning, the parish council shall review the applica application including the concept plan, the record of the commission's recommendations and shall approve approve with conditions or deny the recommendation. And it says if an application with conditions shall be not considered final and the rezoning is not final in, touch, in such time until the applicant submits a written acceptance of the conditions and all necessary revisions to the concept plan to the parish council. All right. This is, this is something that we have to look at. You go back and he doesn't have the pages numbered so I can't tell you where but we're talking about 436 acres for residential. We're looking at 133 acres of common space. 133 acres. That's quite a bit of green space. Okay. Um, we could leave it as is and the man could go and put one house per acre. And really and truly, he could probably go before the variance board and probably get a little bit more than one house per acre, probably. Thinking about it, I don't think they bat an eye on fudging a little bit, okay? Let's move to Santa. Well, and they might. They might, Mr. Thompson. All right, let's, let's, let's okay. keep it civil. Um, <coughs> the gentleman is offering quite a bit. He's quite, got quite a bit on the table. He's talking about $7 million on improvements on roads. All right. I think there's a happy medium that could be met. Density is the key in is the hot potato. Let's give Mr. Grzaffi the opportunity to come back to the table and try to ha meet a happy medium between the developer, the industry, and the residents. That's what I'd like to see. Now, however we have to do that, Mr. Brock, you know. It's an appropriate motion. I think the um, the motion on on the floor is an appropriate motion uh, to what the PUD ordinance reads. Any other dis is that Mr. Tebow? Yes, sir. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? I have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, if if I was reading this thing correctly, the tw the uh, twelve hundred and something homes. We're going to go on the 436 acres that, that were going to be residential. Then you're still going to have some acreage and stuff for professional services too. 
So, I mean, this whole property, you're saying it's 133 acres of common space, but you have seven acres of real uh, of retail, 57 acres of professional services, uh, those kind of things too. So we're going. What he's asking us to do is put 1,200 and something homes on on 436 acres, if I'm reading this correctly. Not on 667, but on 438. And that's a big difference, and that's a big problem. And I, I think that there's, there's too much confusion up here to, to try to twist this stuff around and try to make it fit something tonight. I don't think that we should go there. If we, if we do anything, I think we ought to put the whole thing off or make a motion to accept it or deny it. Period. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Fondo. We have a motion on the floor to, to defer for one month. That's the motion. We'll vote on substitute motion first. Any opposition to the deferment? Opposition. Roll call. You'll be voting on. A yay vote will be to defer, a no vote will be to act on it tonight, on, on the original motion, excuse me. No. Yes. yes. Councilman Joseph. No. Councilman Chase Nyland. We're voting to defer. Yes. A yay would be deferred. That's correct. Yay. Councilman Thompson. No. 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 Councilman Dipsy Lambert. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Councilman Savoy. Yes. Councilman Hillisbeck. No. Councilman Todd Lambert. No. Councilman McConnell. No. Councilman Barga. Yes, ma'am. Okay, the substitute motion fails. We'll now vote on the original motion. Uh, and the motion was to deny. Any opposed? Object. Mr. Barrick objects. Motion passes. Spanish Moss development is denied. We'll move now to agenda item number 18, nonconforming use, to amend section 17-135 to add the word nonconforming to the ordinance to accept or deny. Mr. Chairman. Yes, excuse me. Mr. Block, please explain. Yes, sir. This is a recommendation to uh, approve, uh, to amend that section to add the word nonconforming to the ordinance. Okay. Councilman Shakespeare. Uh This is one of the things that in the past we've been having uh, some problem with. It didn't go to committee yet, and it's a recommendation by uh, uh, planning and zoning. Uh, this one is fairly simple, but uh, I would like to see as a policy that we would uh, send them to committee and uh, no reason not to start with this one. Okay, you, you would like to move that we defer this to committee? Yes. Okay. Motion by Mr. Shakespeare is to defer to committee, second by Councilman Barriga. Any discussion? Yes, Ms. sir. Mr. Hold on. I'm aware of this particular, uh, this particular item and it, it seems that this particular ordinance that we did got challenged and uh, one of the problems was because of this one word. Mm -hmm. I see no reason to go to committee for one word. Okay. <clears throat> Any other councilmen want to make a comment on this? Parish President wants to make a comment. We ask that you not send it to a committee. <laughs> to, you know, the, this issue is something that we dealt with uh, a project on Swamp Road as we really looked into it and trying to determine exactly what the current language in the ordinance meant. And this is to clarify that you know, non-conforming is an exception to that zoning district now based on that facility or that building or that business being there at the time that the zoning was enacted. And, and so we're just trying to restrict this a little bit to clarify it. And the attorneys, Mr. O'Neill and Lance and them are working on this. I mean, this has been an issue for months. So. Uh, you guys want to send it to the committee, obviously you can. The administration asks that you go ahead and vote on this now so that we got, we have the potential of this all over the parish in many areas. And so uh, with the emphasis on growth, uh, the, you know, the, the mood of our citizens and all that's happening, I think we need to 
restrict it and make it as tough as we can, and we need to do it now uh, on this. And so it, it prevents a lot of hassles and uh, potential legal challenges on you know what this means, commercial operations. And I mean this this one issue we got into a point of when was electricity cut off, you know, when was the payroll made and and I just think we need to, to move on this, uh, Kent. It's not uh, nothing against going to a committee but it, it's legal has been working on this for a long time and uh, I don't think it's like uh, the famous issue of what does is mean, but it gets to that in these legal things, and we met with attorneys for both sides on those different businesses involved there. And hopefully, this will help us to prevent some of that and not take so much time to try to uh, solve these issues and to get it up front to where this is what it means. Uh, and you can always amend it and add some more things to it. We want to do that later to the ordinance. But Mr. thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Lambert, Todd. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I want to make a substitute motion that we move forward with the vote tonight. I'll we'll second. Second. Substitute motion by Mr. Lambert, second by Mr. McConnell, was it? Okay, Mr. Hillensbeck, I'm sorry. Mr. Hillensbeck with a second on that. Substitute motion, any discussion? Mr. Checks Mr. Valentine, I, I want to make sure you understand, I, I'm the one that brought forth this thing. I agree with it 100%, and I'm, I'm for it. Uh, a, a lot of things have come up and a lot of little small things and we find out that we're we're getting things at these meetings and we don't have enough time to really talk about the background this background in this area it, as president hughes has said it goes way back and there's a lot of implications and things i just want to try to give us all an opportunity when we get these recommendations so we can sit down and discuss them in an open and uh and fair manner and everyone get it be able to get informed and uh I just want to make sure you understand that. And, uh, with that, I draw, withdraw my original motion because I do want to see it go forward. Okay. But I want to make sure everybody gets an opportunity to be explained. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Shakes. Not and just just a point of information. Uh, did uh, watch the uh, council meeting, the planning zoning meeting last night. Mr. Uh, Michael uh, Marshall did address that situation and said in the future that they would be bringing uh, any changes like this through committee. We will um, vote on uh, Mr. Um, Lambert's motion at this time to accept. Any other discussion? Any opposition? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Brock. Thank you. We'll move to agenda item number 19, introduction of ordinances, introduction of an ordinance to acquire a parcel of real estate by donation from Prairieville Fire Department. Uh, this was from the Finance Committee meeting of February. I the move to introduce the ordinance. Moved by Councilman McConnell, second by Councilman Savoy. Any discussion? Any opposition? So moved. Agenda item number 20, public hearings and ordinances. Public hearing to revoke the public servitude shown on that certain track or parcel of land designated as Lotch H-1-B-1 as shown on the map entitled Map Showing Revocation of a 15-Foot Servitude of Lot H-1-B-1 being a portion of Ashland Industrial Park LLC property located in Section 1-T-10-S R-2-E East Land District, Ascension Parish, Louisiana, Superstar Holdings, LLC. Motion to open the public hearing. Moved by Mr. Hillens Beck to open the public hearing. Second by Mr. Todd Lambert. Any discussion? Public hearing is now open. Anyone wishing to speak on this agenda item, please step forward and sign up with the secretary. Motion to close. Second. Motion by Councilman Thompson to close the public hearing. Second by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Any opposition? Mr. Chairman, point of order, I believe we were supposed to read that ordinance first, wasn't we? Generally, we do that. Uh, excuse me, you are right in the absence of Mr. Babin. Oh, i got to uh, take care of Mr. Parrington. Mr. O'Neill Parrington. Uh, Mr. Parrington, would you please step to the mic and read that ordinance, please? We will, we, we will do that. <laughs> Uh, point of order, Mr. Chairman, do we need to close the uh, no, public well, hearing? Well, let, let, let's, let's do this. Let's back up. Um, I withdraw my <laughs> thank you. motion to open thank the you. public hearing. Second. The purpose is thank to you. revoke the public servitude shown on that certain tract or parcel of land designated as Lodge H1B1, as shown on the map entitled Map Showing Revocation of 15 Foot Servitude on Lot H1B1, being a portion of Ashland Industrial Park LLC, property located in Section 1, T10. South 
or 2E, Southeast Land District, Ascension Parish, Louisiana, for Superstar Holdings, SLLC. Be it ordained that the Parish of Ascension Count, that the Ascension Parish Council has the governing authority for the Parish of Ascension, State of Louisiana, in lawful session, hereby revokes that public servitude designated as 15 foot servitude to be revoked, as shown on a map of survey entitled Map Showing Revocation of a 15 foot servitude on lot H1B1, being a portion of Ashland Industrial Park LLC, properly located in Section 1, Township 10 South, Range 2 East, Southeast Land District. Ascension Parish, Louisiana for Superstar Holdings, LLC, prepared by David L. Patterson, professional land sur surveyor, and all other public servitudes as may affect the subject property or hereby reserved. Motion open for public hearing. Mr. Motion by Mr. Hillens, back to open second. public land hearing. Uh, second by Todd Lambert. Just, well, right now the uh, public hearing is open. Anyone wishing to speak on this, on this please step forward. Motion to close. Chair. Moved by Mr. Lambert to close the public hearing. Second by Mr. Thompson. Discussion? Any opposition to close the public hearing? It's closed. Uh, Mr. Parrington, just a, just a reminder, don't let me do that again. If you do, we'll take that raise back we gave you. <laughs> do I hear um, on the so item number 20, 21, the ordinance? Second. Moved by Mr. Lambert, second by Mr. Hillensback. Any discussion on the ordinance? Any opposition? Ordinance is moved. We'll new, move now to 21A, the intergovernmental agreement from the drainage board. Mr. Lambert, do you want to? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this was all brought to the drainage board in full agreement, and I think the uh, administration, Mr. President, is in agreement with it now, and it hasn't changed since the last time we've seen it, and uh, we need to move forward. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Moved by Councilman Barrigan to accept the intergovernmental agreement. Second. Do I have a second? I second. Second by Councilman Thompson. Any discussion? Any opposition to the motion? No opposition. So moved. Motion Denied adjourn, number 22. Mr. Mr. Barrigan, adjourn. I'll give it a second to Ms. Ms. Lambert. Meeting stands adjourned. Thank you very much. Be safe. <laughs> I'm going to come back.